find a good small college and fall in love with it. When the last book is closed, the last light dimmed. When the cool sheet of silence settles over campus, you can hear it. It's the sound of every heart that's ever beat beneath these oaks, beating together. Journalists just putting their papers to bed, performers speaking into the dark, importers half a world away and already at their desks, scientists, bankers, athletes, no matter where they are, a part of every one of them is here, right now, at Coe College. I was a faculty child born in 1909, which is a long time ago. My father taught economics and political science. We couldn't afford sitters, so I would stay with my father in his office and in his classroom, and I would run around the main building drawing terrible pictures on all the blackboards. <laughs> I thought that would amuse the students. I never saw the Coe campus until I arrived there as a student. I'd come to Coe because I felt it was a place where I could receive an outstanding education and be able to participate in athletics without having the tail wag the dog. For nearly a century and a half, bright, ambitious thinkers have stopped here, then stayed. For what? Not just the open door, surely, nor the simple equation of people and programs, opportunity and accolade. Could it be character? Could it be that kindred spirits recognize one another the moment their hands meet? I had never met Harry Gage, the former president of Co, and I had never spent a day in Iowa. He phoned and asked if I could come down for a visit, and I had an idea what he was about, so I said, Dr. Gage, I'm not interested in being a college president. I am serving one of the finest churches in the East. I'm teaching at Princeton. I have my first book at the publishers, and why would I want to be a college president? We moved out in February when it was 10 degrees below zero and a foot of snow. Scholars argue with vigor over what kind of education best prepares the undergraduate for all that lies beyond these four sweet years. Coe College has always held that it is broad exposure, not narrow training, that transforms good thinkers into ambitious doers. With its recent addition of a required hands-on experience, Coe proves the connection between informed thought and inspired practice. I remember going for my interview for A-level college and telling the professor that I would like to take religious education and chemistry. I was told that it was better for me to choose either a religious education track or a science track. This is quite painful for me because I had a passion for religious education, I had a passion for chemistry. There's this little something inside of me that jumps with glee every time we get a student coming through our department who's also majoring in physics or chemistry. I had entered Co. with the idea I was going to enter law school. But during my last year and a half, I felt myself gravitating towards this great desire to be an athletic coach. I had two outstanding men who I was so fortunate to play for. I looked at those men and said, look at the impact they are having on the lives of me and so many of my teammates. I thought, what an idealistic life that would be. Defining the what of learning invariably leads to another question, how? How do 18-year-old students learn best? Here too, Co is ready with an answer. Students learn best in small classes taught by full-time faculty who are eager to know them as individuals. A lot of making art is taking ideas, uh, feelings, emotions inside of you and expressing them. To do that requires a certain kind of trust. So you try to create an environment in which people feel that they can try things that are maybe a little off-center or a little goofy sometimes uh, and not feel threatened by what may happen. I remember being quizzed by a professor of classics, Ed Burke, and him looking at my resume and saying, well, we see you have several research papers on here. Do you know we're a teaching establishment? And I said, yes, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Don't misunderstand me, he said. We will support you in research, but this is a teaching establishment and our students come first. The emphasis is on teaching. Your primary work is quality teaching. And if you can't do that, no matter what else you can do, we don't belong to you, nor you to us. Although most Iowans never set foot on a farm, 
We feel connected to the land, but we also know there are some things that can't be learned at home. Every year, Coe College sends her students out into the larger world to work, study, and live, believing this to be an essential part of learning. Technology may bring the world closer, but it's personal experience that draws it sharply into focus. A colleague and I took students to England, to London, for one of our J-terms a couple of years ago, and we're taking them next year to Ireland and Scotland. I think that experiential learning in context is immensely valuable. I don't think I've ever met a student who has come back and said they wouldn't long to do it again. Because of where we're situated, we have a large number of internships for students available. Anywhere from a single course during a semester, and a student can do that in Cedar Rapids because they're only a five-minute car ride or a bus ride away from most of the places they might work. There's no way to duplicate that in the classroom, that type of experience. If the classroom unlocks the inner sanctum, life in residence throws open the outer door. Here, students become governing members of a community unlike any they've ever known. They taste the sweet and growing confidence that comes from first joining, then leading student groups. They make the team. They fall in love and do a lot of growing up along the way. I went to all the pushball contests and cried loudly because I thought everybody was being hurt. <laughs> Then when I went to football games, I was a little older, and I thought they were all praying because the team all got down in a circle. Every freshman's just a little nervous about the social interactions that they're going to encounter. Everybody wonders if they're gonna fit in, you know, who they're gonna hang out with, are they gonna be happy? And it's great to see them as they grow up. A lot of our students discover things about themselves they never knew when they came as 18-year-olds. When a student goes to college and athletics is the main focus, it's almost a tragedy. To go to college and not be able to participate in athletics if a student wants to, that too is a tragedy. You don't have to be a great athlete in order to be a person of character, but I do think that many of the character qualities which allow a person to perform athletically carry over to help them succeed in other areas as well. Thick reports could be written about the lifetime value of a private liberal arts education. Whole armies of clerks could be kept busy charting the return on investment, class by class, year by year, and it still wouldn't get at the heart of the issue. A co-college education is invaluable, and here's why. Because good students with strong skills can come here for four years and leave with their wildest dreams in their hands. Ready for work, ready for graduate study, ready for lives of extraordinary contribution. If you look at the employment of our students, you will find it just goes off the chart, 97, 98, 99 percent in their first year out of school. And you'll find that over the long pull, liberal arts graduates tend toward leadership positions more than technically trained people. I could have decided on a bigger school, but I don't think I would have gotten near the attention or near the opportunities. I'm the chairperson of a couple of committees, and I don't think I would have gotten the urge to do that if somebody hadn't said, you know, you should try that. If I hadn't gone to Co, I don't know. I'm glad I came to Co. I think it was the best decision I could have made for colleges. No, your life would be miserable because you never would have met me. See? That's true. There's a reason why I came to Co. <laughs> and you're one of them, Casey. Stewart Memorial Library. 1931. Peterson Hall of Science, 1968. The Clark Racket Center, 1989. What keeps them standing is not wood and stone, but lives lived within their walls. The daily repetition of friends met and classes held, meals shared and ideas discovered for the first time, over and over, year after year. One generation comes, grows, blossoms and moves on. The next steps up only to find the hill a bit higher, the view a bit more lovely than it was the year before. And so it is that all who touch Coe College, students, parents, teachers, and friends, add their voices to the rising chorus on a still night. You can hear them all.